A big thank you to Harry, Rodri and their parents for granting permission to use their footage in this video. The mental side of tennis is massively important and today we'll begin by having an understanding of what's actually going on during these moments of negative self-talk or indeed all those moments when negative or unhelpful thoughts enter a tennis player's mind. Without this understanding it's almost impossible to improve and develop better mental strength. Let's just take a quick look back at two of those clips. So, who is Harry calling an idiot and who is Rodri calling an imbecile? The obvious answer is themselves, but there's clearly an interaction going on here. A great way to understand this is to imagine you have an outer self and an inner self. In this case, the outer self is passing judgment on the inner self's performance by labeling them an idiot, imbecile, and so on. When playing singles, effectively your inner self and outer self are operating as a doubles team. Only the inner self is unable to speak back and has to simply absorb all that the outer self throws at them. Let's now take a look at a fictitious match between Dave and Sheila and see the sort of things that Dave's outer self will say to his inner self when things aren't going very well. That was the worst shot ever. What are you doing? You are so bad at tennis. This is pointless, just give up. Well, I certainly wouldn't be jumping up and down after that barrage of abuse. And you can imagine how ineffective a real doubles pairing would be with that sort of interaction going on. The idea of the two selves is now widely accepted in the field of sports psychology and it's not new. Timothy Galway first wrote about this in his excellent book The Inner Game, first published in 1976 and a cult classic read for all serious coaches and players. I first read this book over 20 years ago and I've been fascinated by the mental side of tennis ever since. Mental training is therefore a big part of what we teach in the squad program at Hawker, not just because it's so important for competitive tennis, but also because these skills are invaluable for all other aspects of life, and especially important for young people and kids to grasp. This match will be easy. I won't have any problems with her. 40 love up easy game. 6 2 5 1 up, you can't lose from here. Look, confidence is great, but when it leads to expectations, pressure to win, and disrespect of your opponent's ability, it will probably only serve to hinder performance. So, the first step to make progress in this area is awareness. Simply recognize when those moments of negative self talk or negative thoughts are occurring. Increase your understanding by being able to come off the court and acknowledge the moments in the match where your outer self was giving your inner self a really tough time. Game to Sheila, Dave leads 5-2. Well done, what a great game that was. Excellent, another missed smash. Lost the set from 5-1 up, wow you are just so good. Yes, sarcasm is also a tactic of the outer self. In fact, I've got a clip of Harry missing a backhand down the line and then referring to the shot as sick. Sick actually means really good uh, for the older generation out there. But the shot wasn't really good because he missed it, hence the sarcasm. Should we just watch it? After awareness comes the most important ingredient of them all, motivation. You need to be motivated to be able to improve this side of your game. This might be because you want to fulfill your potential, or you want to be able to learn and improve faster, or you'd like to be better at controlling your emotions, or you'd like competing to be less stressful and more enjoyable or you may just not want to have the reputation of being a bit of a nutter when you play tennis. The list is endless, 
but if you're serious about wanting to improve the mental side of your game, you need to be really clear on what's motivating you to do it. Sheila leads 5-2, final set. You're going to lose, this is unbelievable. Game set match to Sheila. You are the worst. So, you've got awareness, motivation, next you need a plan and ideally someone to support you, whether it's your coach, a family member or a friend. We'll come back to the mental side of tennis many times throughout the year and we'll cover some great skills and ideas to help you come up with an effective plan. But for now, simply try to be non-judgmental when competing. Don't associate bad or good to anything that happens within the match. After all, evaluation of performance should come after the match or on the practice court. Simply try and observe and experience what goes on in the match without associating negative or positive values to anything that happens. Easier said than done for many, I know, but persevere with it and see if you can get a bit better day by day, week by week. Of course, if the motivation is high enough, then the support person isn't absolutely necessary, but it sure does help. Just take the example of Murray and Lendl. Murray had a lot of issues with negative body language and negative self-stalk at crucial stages of big matches. He became aware that this was a problem. His motivation to overcome it was to win his first Grand Slam title. And in Ivan Lendl, he had a great person to support and help him to achieve this. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I do hope you found it interesting and I'll look forward to see you soon on the next video.